Praise God, it's, um, it's a precious thing when the Lord uh, shares his heart with us. And, um, and it's because he does want us to come to know him more and more intimately. Um, I was thinking, in, in the light of what the Lord has shared with us this morning, I, in, in this very verse that uh, Phil started out with there, the first verse, O oh Lord, you have searched me, and you know me, and you know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. And he, he goes on down to, uh, you hem me in, <laughs> behind and before you've laid your hand upon me such knowledge is too wonderful for me I was thinking about what David wrote there in the 23rd Psalm when he said your rod and your staff they comfort me those symbols of God's authority power word those symbols of his governance over our lives. David says, they comfort me. God has come this morning and comforted us. And I had a thought before Phil got up and um, you know, I was questioning as to whether or not it was um, something that the Lord would have me share. I was actually wrestling with that when uh, Phil got up. But I think it flows with what we've heard this morning because, uh, and, he, and he referred to the very chapter there in Hebrews 4 uh, where it speaks of all things being open before God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. And of course if you read that in the context of the rest of that uh, chapter, he says, therefore since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we, pro we profess for. We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are, yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne, how? How? The throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Amen. Praise God. I tell you folks, this morning, let's not neglect so great a salvation as our God has provided for us in His Word, in His Son, in His exceeding great and precious promises. And uh, the thought that I, that I actually had before Phil got up, which comes from this same chapter, but it, uh, it, and it's speaking of entering into the Sabbath rest that God has for us. And he, he was talking about, you know, back in the wilderness, and then he was also talking about when they went into the promised land. Uh, um, and we'll just pick it up here in verse 7. It says, Therefore God again set a certain day, calling it today. When a long time later he spoke through David as was said before, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Folks, he wants us to enter into his rest. And today, if we will hear his voice, let's not harden our hearts. Let's not neglect this great salvation. Let's reach out. He's reaching out to us. Let's reach back to our Lord and... and and say, Lord, search me. And it's true, if that's our prayer, that he would search us and he would try us and he would bring to light the needs that are there. It's true, he will answer that prayer. Folks, it's not something to be afraid of. It's something to be so very thankful for. Because as those needs are brought to light, then by his grace... By his love, by his divine enablement, those things can be removed from the recesses of our hearts. Those very attitudes of the heart that are even hidden from us can be brought to light, can be purged and removed, and we can be drawn closer. We can come to know him more intimately and to be more Vessels meet for his use. 
how blessed we are, how great is our God. It, it, it is wonderful. The word we've heard this morning, I tell you what, it's gloriously wonderful. This is a wonderful salvation that our God has provided and it is for us today. Today. This is the day. This is the time that the Lord has shared his heart this morning with us. Let's not harden our hearts. Let's not neglect it. Let's lay fast hold of it. Amen. Praise God. He loves us with an everlasting love. And I believe it's the cry of his children. God, do come and lead me in the way everlasting. He will do that. He longs to do that. Praise God. Praise God. I appreciate this too. A lot of the similar thoughts were expressed Wednesday night. I think the Lord wants us to be able to lay hold of this and really enter into it in faith. But uh, I just was thinking, you know, as different ones were speaking, just it's interesting how much of what's really at the heart of this issue goes all the way back to what happened in the garden. Where it's, what's God's really, what's his intent toward me? You know, can I really trust him if I just put it all out there and I put myself 100% in his hands? Can I trust him or has he got some other agenda on there, on, you know, behind the scenes? Because that's, that's the lie the enemy sold to him in the, in the garden. And that's just been in mankind ever since. And that's what the battle is against is to truly be able to trust and know that he's on our side. Because it's, you know, it's one thing to know that, okay, he's got all this knowledge about me. He knows me. But it makes all the difference in the world as to what's his intent. What's he going to do with that? Is it going to be to, so he can punish us, so he can be mad at us, or so he can embarrass us? Or... Do you believe that it's so he can help us and cleanse us? It makes all the difference in the world the way that we... That's how David could do what he do because he knew that God loved him. He knew that all of that, the purpose of all of that was to help him. Not to condemn him, but to help him and to deliver him. And as I'm sure many of you did, I just thought about the... the probably the, the, several of you thought of it, the song that we sing sometimes with our group, uh, um, The Secret Place. In fact, I think you were, you were flipping through the book and I saw it come up there as you were flipping through this morning. But you know the words of that song? It says, My heart is like a house. One day I let the Savior in. And there were many rooms we would visit now and then. You know, you, you develop a relationship. You, you learn to walk with the Lord. And there are certain areas we are comfortable with. You revel in His presence. But it says, But then one day He saw the door. And I knew the day had come too soon. And I said, Jesus, I'm not ready for us to visit in that room. You know, that's, that's the part. We don't want to go in. We don't want to open up to Him all the way like that. It, and the chorus of that song says, It's a place in my heart where even I don't go. There's one thing to want to not let anybody else know what's going on, but there's things that I don't even want to think about about me that I know that I don't even want to dwell on. I don't even go there. And there's things hidden there I don't want anyone to know. But he handed me the key with tears of love on his face. That's, that's his motive. That's his goal. That's why he wants to deal with us. That's why he wants us to surrender. And when he's handing you, it is a key. It's a key for a prison. It's not, not a tool to condemn with. It's a key. And he's handing it to us with love on his face. He said, I want to make you clean. Let me go in that secret place. Praise God. What a wonderful love that is. But then the next verse, it says, you know, then I opened up the door. But see, it says, I opened up the door. He's not going to force his way in. That's what he's doing for us this morning. He's, he's making that, that plea. Here's the key. Let me come in. And then it's, are we going to open the door? Are we going to trust and lay hold of that? And can we open that door and say, okay, Lord, come in. I trust you. I trust your motives. I trust that you love me. I trust that you're on my side. I'm willing to let you in. I'm willing to, to lay everything before you open and honest. It says, as the two of us walked in, I was so afraid that it might reveal my hidden sin, which, of course, it wasn't hidden to start with, not to him. And he's the one we're talking about here. It wasn't hidden to him anyway. But I was so afraid it might reveal my hidden sin. But when I think about that room now, I'm not afraid anymore because I know my hidden sin no longer lies behind that door. Praise God. That's what he's offering us this morning. He's offering us deliverance. Because that's the first step. We've got to be willing to be honest and communicate. And we've got to be willing to open that door if we want to truly be set free. And that's what he's doing this morning. That's the purpose of him handing us the key. It's not so he can dig out all the bad details and use them against us. It's so we can be set free. I just praise him for that this morning. It's so wonderful. It is a wonderful salvation that he would do all of this for us. And he would go to the lengths that he would go to. Have those thoughts, those immeasurable, innumerable thoughts towards us. Considering everything that he knows. It's a, it's a love beyond belief. It's a, it's a heavenly love. It's God's love. And I just praise Him for it this morning. He's so good to us.